Hello folks, this is Acrylis, and today I am going to do a joystick setup guide for newbies. Now, I don't mean newbies as in any disrespect, I myself am you know, a newbie, that's why I decided to do this. I went through a lot of joystick setup guides and they helped me um, come to this point where I understand a little bit better. But the problem I ran into is a lot of it, they were made from experienced players and I didn't understand everything. So what I would like to do is to give you a guide from someone like yourself and me who really doesn't know everything there is to know about you know the game. And I'm going to do it in a reserve plane because I you know I want to do a plane that everybody has access to. You know you can see here I do have you know some higher level planes, but you may not have access to those. And I really want you to see it in a plane that you know you can understand and get in and follow my tutorial if, if need be. I chose the P26B reserve plane and um, we're going to go right into the options here and hit controls and as you can sell, tell I already have mine set up and I'm using a Logitech Extreme uh, 3D joystick. Now I have a track IR on the way but right now I don't have it so I want to do it without it and I'll do a video on that later. Now I have my joystick set up so the hat control um, does panning and what I mean by panning there's two different types for the hat control. Panning would be like you would actually turn your head and look around and the other one is snap view like if I want to look left I press the left hat and it will snap to that position but when I let go it will come back and you can do that two ways also you can do it where it stays there but you really do not want that when on your snap view you want it to snap back on panning however the best way is to not have it snap back and you'll have to assign a key to press to send her back to the cockpit and I'll show you how to do that also okay the first thing you want to do is do this in a test flight now I'm going to do mine on full reel and I will show you later how to um, do it on once we set it up like this you can also use that same setting on um, you know, historical even with different um, joystick configurations like not full reel controls because you know you do definitely don't want to fly full reel in historical because full reel is a much harder mode and you can, you know, you can fly historical if that's all you're going to fly. You don't want to have to fly full reel. Okay, so let me show you right now what mine looks like. And you can see I chose this plane. It has like, oh, I accidentally fired my guns. I, um, it has a wide open cockpit. So good view range, you know, all the way around. And this is what I meant by panning. Now I have my uh, center, my, my view set up as space bar. You can set it up whatever you want. And see it automatically goes back and then we also have a uh, a zoom and that's what you're going to be using in full reel to you know try to spot you know okay let's let's go back and let's show you how to do it okay the first thing you're going to do is hit escape and you're going to hit controls now the best way to do this because you know you may not have a logitech extreme you know you may have a, a totally different joystick the best way to do this is to right here this little button here it removes the, the binding on that particular one okay you can go through control setup wizard that'll help a lot also so let's just do that all right we're going to select full, air, full aircraft control okay now this is totally up to you I do not use my mouse because I got one hand on the joystick, one hand on the keyboard, you know, back and forth. But if you wanted to use your mouse as like a, a control setting for your, like your, your hat, if your joystick doesn't have a hat, then put it on view controller. I'm going to select neither. Alright, pitch axis. This is when your aircraft goes up and down. Now this particular one, they want to know what do you want to raise your aircraft up? So grab your joystick and just pull back on it. 
Okay, now they want them down. Push forward. Now you may prefer your joystick to do the opposite. If you do, you know, you just do the opposite. Okay, this is roll, left and right. Okay, they want to know which one I want for my aircraft to roll right. So, I am going to do this. Okay, left is this. All right, y'all, this is your rudder. My joystick has a twist. If yours doesn't, then you may want to assign buttons to this. Okay, so I am going to twist my joystick right, and now it's going to ask me for left, left, okay. Your throttle. Now I use a throttle on my joystick, but you may want to use a button throttle. And I found the best button throttles to use is number one and two. However, you may want to use, you know, W, A, any of your selected, you know, it's your choice. All right, for, for forward, I push up on my throttle. I push back on my throttle. Okay, now that's done. Okay, machine guns. Now this is totally up to you. I like, most aircraft have machine guns. Some don't, but most do. So I make this my primary by pressing the trigger. The cannons. I am going to use button two as the cannons. And the reason I did that, in full real or historical, you have limited ammunition. If you plan on just firing, you know, playing um, arcade, then you may want to set both of them up on your trigger. And all you do is when it asks for cannons, hit your trigger again. It will tell you that this button is assigned to machine guns. And you just, it, it gives you an option, add, replace, or cancel. You just hit add. Okay. However, like I said, I fly historical and full reel mostly. So I want to select which gun I fire so I don't waste ammo. So I set up my machine guns on button one, my cannons on button two. And you can also, if you if you want to, set up a button, an extra button for both of them. And I'll show you how to do that later too. But um, that way if you if you know you have a good shot, you can either fire both buttons or you can just hit another button. I think that's a waste of a button, but you know it's totally up to you. Now sometimes I do fly uh, fly bomber um, aircraft or aircraft that can drop bombs so it's asking me what button I want to assign as you can see since my joystick is previously set up it says I have a current assignment of button 5 now I am going to keep that assignment because I mean I'll just be hitting button 5 again so all I will do is hit escape to keep the current assignment Okay, I've already got my rocket set up, but um, you can either select a button here on your joystick or your keyboard, or if you already have an assignment like I do, we're going to do that. But if I didn't have an assignment, I would just select button 11 or R. And I added both buttons there, and I'll sh like I said, I'll show you how to do that later. Because sometimes my hand's on my keyboard, and it's easier for me to press R, but you know, most time. I just use button 11. Gear. Now my key, my particular joystick only has six buttons on the uh, base, four buttons on the top, a hat switch, and and a really my cannon and my machine gun button. Now I do have programmable you know software on my joystick where I can make you know like a shift key and use extra buttons, but that's really too much for you know my my simple mind to keep up with in combat. So G is the default toggle gear. I just keep it at that. Because you're not going to be using your gear that much anyway to land, you know, to take when you take off to raise it. Occasionally to slow your plane down if in emergencies, you know, which is a very bad idea in full realistic because you can rip them off at high speeds. All right, some planes use air brake. So that's the current assignment is H. That's the default assignment from the game. So we're going to keep that. Flaps. Now I have a button six on my joystick set up as flaps because you will be using flaps quite a bit. And most of the time my hand is on the, um, the buttons on my joystick and my other hand is on the um, actual stick. So it was easier for me to use button six because it's really accessible to my hand. But I did keep one. Um, on F 
that's the uh, default assignment just to keep you know because I didn't really want to take it off okay lock target now this is a button close to my the front of my joystick and so it's a real easy button for me to select now you won't be using that button in full reel but anything historical and down you'll you'll use it so if you plan on using your joystick in historical you might want to keep that button if you don't and it's just full reel then you can just go ahead and just you know don't assign a, a button to it okay lock next target now like I said I don't really use these because the game kinda automatically if you fire at another target it'll lock it and so I just kinda skip these saves, saves a couple buttons the tactical map these are buttons totally you know optional you may not even look at the map but in full reel you really do need to look at the map occasionally and see where you're headed and where you're going so I did assign a button to that alright this is the uh, statistics tab this is where you pull up you know the uh, your name, your rent, your how many kills you've got, all that during the game. So I keep that at tab because I like you know that's the de default anyway. There is another button assigned here because I did download this uh, joystick config from Fly Daily, and that's what he uses. And I didn't you know particularly care for that one. I just didn't bother taking it off. Okay, chat. This is where you can type in and talk to people during the game. So enter is a default. So my keyboard doesn't have a num. I, it has a num on it, but um, I'm using the uh, Z board. It's an older keyboard. It has like a highlighted uh, red uh, W A S D Q E, and um, it doesn't have a num pad on it because all you know it's got this extra section on the board that kind of takes up room. So you really, if you want to use num, you have to um, use a, a sequence of keys and I don't use it so let's keep that general chat is the same thing as chat so we'll keep that you want to set up view controls alright this is always a yes so we're gonna hit yes okay what are you gonna be using this plane for this joystick is it gonna be full reel if it is set the uh, cockpit view if you're gonna be using historical then maybe you want the default uh, third person that way you automatically start off I always keep mine in cockpit view and then I can hit the V key and change it later the virtual cockpit that's where you have the blank there's no instrument showing you just have a you know her horizon bar and um, we're gonna go with cockpit view okay default view this is um, like you know if you change views during game to automatically come back you know to the default view you just set up okay this is where we set up our hat the X axis as you can see right there is your left and right so you want to take your hat and you want to move it left or right okay in the direction it's showing you it wants you to move it to okay so see I, I moved it left it didn't pick it up let's do it again okay there we go sometimes it's a little Yankee on this okay you wanna look up now with your hat look down with your hat okay now what's that that just did is that's for pan options I mean not pan options snap view now if you're gonna use the snap view do you want to center the view automatically click yes okay toggle view this is where you select cockpit third person um, if you're in a bomber the gunner you know so usually the B button I have it set up on button 9 also so we're gonna do that tracking this is very important in, in historical and um, arcade this is where you've targeted an enemy and you're in combat with him now he went behind you now you want to always keep your eye on him so you can hit this button and it will turn your head your view to show you where he's at and then you just kind of fly your your plane back into the center view towards him now that's a little hard to do sometimes but um, 
It kind of gives you an idea where your enemy's at and what, what movements you need to make. Mine's set up on button 8. Zoom camera. This is very important in um, all modes, especially for real battle because you zoom in so you can see the little dots in the horizon, you know. Okay, so mine is Z, numpad 0, which was already set up on this joystick, at button 7. So we're going to keep our button 7. But you, if you're going to use, I'd always recommend to keep the Z also, unless you need that key for something. That way you know, you know, if you're every close, your left hand is on the keyboard at the time, you can just press Z. Zoom axis. Now this is where you can actually adjust your zoom. Um, how far it zooms in, how fast, and all that. This is really unimportant to most people. It may be more important for like um, an IRR, track IR, but we're going to keep the current assignment, which is nothing. Do you have track, track IR? For right now, we're going to say no. Okay, if you're going to be flying full reel like I have, you're going to be trimming your aircraft. And what this means is I'll show you it when we go back to our aircraft. When you take off in full reel, any prop so any single engine prop plane has torque. Usually it's going to pull to the left and some will pull up or down depending on the aircraft. So what you do is um, once you feel the plane start the pull the direction usually left you give it a little right rudder twist and then you're going to select minus button 4 and you're going to hit that and it's going to trim your rudder so you're not having to fight that plane with all that rudder the whole time. It's automatically going to give it a certain amount of right rudder twist. And um, it'll help you, you know, keep your your mind on something different. I'll show you what, what effect it has later. Okay, reset trimming. This is really important. If you, uh, we've just automatically on the previous page, we've set a button to trim our aircraft. Okay, but once you take off, you don't want that trim anymore. You want to change it to a different trim. So you need a button to cancel that out. And mine is button 3. Alright, elevator trim axis. Now I don't use this. I use the um, the previous two buttons. And they will set all trims at once. But however, once you get more involved. And you want to start controlling your aircraft more precisely. You can control your elevator trim, your rudder trim. And... Um, And, um, and other trims separate. I forgot the other one. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> but um, I don't trim them separate. But if you are going to trim them separate, you know, you know, you really don't have to know how to use these kind of. So if you're watching my video for newbies, you probably don't know how to use this. So it's not important to you anyway. Just like it's not important to me. I haven't got that deep into it yet. So I do know how to do them and, and when to do them. But it's just too much for me to take into right now because I'm new in full real battles. I want to just kind of let the uh, computer do as most work as possible for me until I get used to it. Once I start getting, you know, really good at it, then I'll, I'll move up a step. You know what I mean? I, right now I'm doing baby steps. I'm going to let the automatic work do its work. And then once I feel I'm ready, I will start, cr you know, controlling other, ac you know, aspects of the aircraft. Okay, the ailerons. That's the one I couldn't think of. Okay, the aileron trim, some planes want to automatically tilt down left or right. And like I said, the first two trims I did where you set trim and reset trim, they're going to take care of all of this for you. And when you get ready, you know, later on when I get ready to move up and do these separate, then I'll do a video on them. But right now we're doing the newbie version, which is, oh my God, I don't even want to see this. So we're going to skip all these. Flaps. Okay, now flaps has two different versions just like the trim. It's got the, um, the F button, which I showed you earlier. And what the F button does, it not only raises your flaps and lowers your flaps, but it does it in conjunction with what you're doing. If you're in the air, it's going to put, put auto, and you hit F, it's automatically going to put combat flaps on. And when you hit it again, it's automatically going to raise. However, if you want to totally control your aircraft, you can use this. 
but on the F button, let's say you got your gear down. Well, the computer knows you got your gear down. You hit F, and it will put down your landing flaps. If you're on the landway, you hit F, and it will put down your takeoff flaps. If you do this method, now you have to choose which flaps you want. It will, you know, the computer will have no say so in it at all. So I can actually put down landing flaps while I'm in the air if I want. And this is how you control that. But, you know, like I said, this is a newbie version. We're going to let the computer do as much work for us as we can. So this one's currently set on X because, I, you know, I did experiment with doing it myself. And it's just too much work. You know, like I said, this is the newbie version. Once you get ready to, you know, have total control of your plane, we'll, you know, we'll do a video on this. And there's the flaps up. And when you do these, it'll cycle through. When you hit flaps up, if you got landing on, it'll go to combat. And then it'll go to up. The X will go, you know, down to combat, down to landing. So, you know, like I said, it's a lot more work. Just use the F key like I showed you on the first page, and you can skip all that. Okay, break. Now, this is another one. Uh, mine, I have both right and left brakes set up on B. That way I hit brake, and it automatically, you know, uses both brakes. If you want total control, you can set up one for right, one for left, and you can actually, like, when you land, you can make your plane spin, kind of like with your, um, your, um, rudder control. However, these are very tricky to use because you can you can make your plane if you just hold down the right button, you can actually make your plane, you know, twist down into the ground and stuff. And we don't you know, like I said, this is a newbie version. We're not using this. So we're gonna keep and we got B on both of them. We're gonna use both brakes at once as once. Engine controls. Now, this is, you know, this is a newbie version, so we're not going to use engine controls. The computer is going to do all of our engine controls. This involves uh, fuel mixture, um, pro propeller twist, all this stuff that, you know, as a newbie, you shouldn't know anything about. So, we're going to keep all of this gone. Alright, toggle engine. This is only used, well, you can use it in any mode. You only want to use it in full real mode. Because, <laughs> um... In um, historical and arcade, your engine will automatically, you know, you, when you take off, your engine will automatically be running. In full reel, it won't. So I have the I key, to, uh, I key set up to turn on my engine or turn off my engine. Because sometimes in full reel bow, battle, your engine will actually cut itself off and you have to restart it in the air. Okay. But in, like I said, in um, arcade and, and um, historical, you shouldn't be using this key because if you hit it, it's going to cut your engine off because your engine should be running. Propeller pitch. That's what I was telling you about. Now this, I'm not certain. I haven't read up on this. It's something to do with your torque and your um, thrust. And you have to know when to use it and how to use it. And we are not doing that. Alright. If you were using that, there is a key where you can toggle auto prop pitch. So just to, just to say you were using it, and you totally got it screwed up and don't know what to do. You hit these keys or one of these keys, and it will the computer will take over and set your prop pitch. Which if you don't mess with to begin with, the computer is automatically doing it. All right, mixture. That's one of one of the um, advanced options I was talking about. I'll tell you about it, but I'm not. We're not going to use it. At high altitude, your plane um, it will use less fuel, and it it gets a more um, efficient uh, burn of the fuel if you'll set your fuel to a lower air to fuel mixture that's called lean and then at high altitude you know your plane performs better and it uses less fuel if you're low altitude you want a heavy fuel and um, air mixture and that way um, keeps the plane from you know, stalling out as much. It keeps it, you know, keep, keeps more fuel in the carburetor. So we're not going to use that. We're going to let the computer handle all that. The radiator. This is another um, advanced one. And this is like um, pretty much controlling your coolant and how fast it's pumping in and out. 
Um, it's mainly like if you're in a cold environment, your high altitude, low altitude, hot environment, and it's way too complicated for a newbie guide and too complicated for a newbie like me, so we're going to skip it. Okay guys, I had to cut it here because the video was getting too long. Check out part two and we'll finish up. Thank you.